China. He was its first emperor, and his empire became his fortress, protected by a great wall, and built a tomb the like of which mankind has never seen. In a groundbreaking revelation that has captured global attention, scientists have finally unlocked the tomb of China's first emperor, a crypt shrouded in mystery and sealed for millennia. This shocking news marks a critical moment in history as the resting place of the illustrious Qin Shi Huang is unveiled after thousands of years of secrecy. The tomb, cloaked in tales of death traps, mercury rivers, and ancient legends, has held its secrets with an iron grip until now. Join us on this extraordinary journey as the sealed chambers yield their secrets, rewriting the narrative of a bygone era. The daring exploration of the tomb of China's first emperor promises a cascade of discoveries, unveiling the mysteries that have tantalized scholars and sparked the imagination of the world. This fascinating fact unveils not just an archaeological marvel, but a gateway to the past, inviting us to witness the grandeur of an ancient ruler and the treasures buried with him. Born in the capital Handan of the Zhao state, Ying Zheng or Zhao Zheng, Qin Shi Huang was the offspring of King Zhuangxiang of Qin and Lady Zhao. The prosperous merchant Lu Bu Wei played a pivotal role in facilitating his succession to Qin's leadership, and upon assuming this role, he adopted the title Zheng, King of Qin. By age 38, in 221 BC, he accomplished the remarkable feat of subduing all other warring states, uniting China, and ascending to the throne as its inaugural emperor. Qin Shi Huang's generals significantly expanded China's territorial expanse throughout his reign. Military campaigns in the south permanently incorporated the Yue lands of Hunan and Guangdong into the Chinese cultural sphere. Simultaneously, Inner Asia campaigns led to the Ordos Loop's acquisition from the nomadic Xiongnu, though the Xiongnu later regrouped under Modu Chanyu. Collaborating with his minister Li Si, Qin Shi Huang initiated extensive economic and political reforms aimed at standardizing the varied practices of the preceding Chinese states. Traditionally depicted as a tyrannical ruler and staunch legalist, historical assessments of him were influenced in part by the critical views of the Han Dynasty. However, since the mid-20th century, scholars have questioned this characterization, sparking substantial discourse on the actual nature of his policies and reforms. But what feats did the emperor achieve during his reign? The king's notable projects were integrating disparate state walls into the iconic Great Wall of China, establishing an extensive national road system, and constructing his colossal mausoleum guarded by a life-sized terracotta army. Qin Shi Huang ruled until he died in 210 BC during his fifth tour of eastern China. Despite historical portrayals, contemporary scholars are revisiting the evaluation of Qin Shi Huang's reign, prompting extensive debates about the true nature of his governance. Regardless of varying perspectives, Sinologist Michael Lowe notes that few would contest the view that the achievements of his reign have exercised a paramount influence on the whole of China's subsequent history, marking the start of an epoch that closed in 1911. In 246 BC, following the brief three-year reign of King Zhuangxiang, his 13-year-old son ascended the throne after his father's death. Due to Zhao Zheng's youth, Lu Buwei assumed the role of regent prime minister for the state of Qin, which was actively engaged in warfare against the other six states. Nine years later, in 235 BC, Zhao Jing assumed full authority as Lu Buwei faced banishment due to a scandal involving Queen Dowager Zhao. Zhao Cheng Zhao, the legitimate half-brother of Zhao Zheng and Lord Chang'an, shared the same father but had a different mother. After Zhao Zheng took the throne, Cheng Zhao rebelled at Tung Liu, ultimately surrendering to the state of Zhao. In response, Zhao Zheng executed Cheng Zhao's remaining supporters and families. As King Zheng matured, Lu Bu Wei, apprehensive that the young king would uncover his relationship with Lady Zhao, sought to distance himself and find a replacement for the Queen Dowager. Enter Lao Ai, a man Lu Bu Wei discovered and disguised as a eunuch by plucking his beard. Lao Ai and Queen Zhao Ji developed a close bond, leading to the secret birth of two sons. Lao Ai was granted the title of Marquis Lao Ai and received considerable wealth. 
However, his intentions turned ominous as he planned to replace King Zheng with one of his sons. During a dinner party, Lao Ai imprudently boasted about being the young king's stepfather in 238 BC. Seizing an opportunity while the king was on a journey to the former capital, Yong Lao Ai seized the queen's mother's seal and orchestrated a coup, mobilizing an army. Upon learning of the rebellion, King Zheng instructed Lu Bu Wei to deploy Lord Chang Ping and Lord Chang Wen to confront Lao Ai. While the royal army quelled hundreds of rebels in the capital, Lao Ai successfully escaped the battlefield. A reward of one million copper coins was offered for the capture of Lao Ai alive, or half a million if he was taken dead. Lao Ai's supporters were apprehended and executed by beheading. Subsequently, Lao Ai was bound and torn into five pieces by horse carriages, and his entire family faced execution up to the third degree. The two concealed sons met the same fate, while Zhao Ji, their mother, was confined under house arrest until her passing many years later. In 235 BC, Lu Bue drank a cup of poisoned wine, choosing to end his life. Following these events, Ying Zheng assumed complete control as the king of the Qin state, with Li Si stepping in as the new chancellor to replace Lu Bu Wei. How did Qin Shi Huang die? In 211 BC, a huge meteor is said to have landed in Dongjun, which is located in the lower stretches of the Yellow River. In response to this celestial event, inscriptions emerged with the subversive message that the first emperor would die and his land would be divided. In pursuit of the truth behind this prophecy, the emperor dispatched an imperial secretary for investigation. Failing to identify the culprit, all residents in the vicinity were executed, and the inscribed stone was obliterated. While on his fifth tour of eastern China, the emperor fell seriously ill in Pingwan County, Shandong, and passed away in July or August 210 BC at the palace in Shakyu Prefecture. This location was approximately two months' travel from the capital, Xianyang. Qin Shi Huang succumbed to the ailment at the age of 49, and the exact cause of his death remains uncertain. Some speculate that his numerous years of rule had affected his health. Another hypothesis suggests poisoning through an elixir containing mercury, administered by his court alchemists and physicians in his relentless pursuit of immortality. Upon the emperor's demise, Imperial Chancellor Li Si, apprehensive of potential uprisings during the two-month journey back to Xianyang capital, chose to conceal the news. Only a select few, including a younger son, Ying Hu Hai, the eunuch Zhao Gao, and a handful of favored eunuchs were informed within the imperial entourage. To mask the unpleasant scent of the emperor's decomposing body in the summer heat, Li Si ordered carts laden with rotten fish to proceed and follow the emperor's wagon. Maintaining the illusion that the emperor was alive behind the wagon's shade, they diligently changed his attire daily, provided sustenance, and feigned communication to and from him. But it wasn't until they arrived in Xianyang that the emperor's death was officially announced. Qin Shi Huang, who had avoided discussions about his death and left no written will, had his eldest son Fusu as the rightful heir. However, Li Si and the chief eunuch Zhao Gao hatched a plot to eliminate Fusu, as he was aligned with their adversary, General Meng Tian. Meng Tian's senior minister brother had previously punished Zhao Gao. Li Si and Zhao Gao collaborated to forge a letter purportedly from Qin Shi Huang, instructing Fusu and General Meng to take their own lives. The scheme succeeded, leading to Fusu's demise, and Qin Shi Huang's younger son, Hu Hai, commenced a brief reign as the second emperor, later known as Qin Ershur, or second generation Qin. What's so special about Qin Shi Huang's tomb? The mausoleum of the first Qin emperor, dedicated to Qin Shi Huang, the inaugural ruler of the Qin dynasty, is situated in Xi'an, Shanxi province, China's Lintong district. The mausoleum was constructed from 246 to 208 BCE and features a 76-meter-tall tomb mound shaped like a truncated pyramid. Modeled after the layout of Xianyang, the Qin Dynasty's capital, the mausoleum includes inner and outer cities with circumferences of 1.553 miles and 3.915 miles, respectively. Positioned in the southwest of the inner city, the tomb facing east holds the main chamber housing the coffin and burial artifacts. 
While the tomb remains unexcavated, ongoing archaeological explorations focus on the surrounding cemetery, including the Terracotta Army to the east, as a protective garrison for the mausoleum. The records of the Grand Historian details the construction of the first emperor's mausoleum from around 247 BCE to 208 BCE, lasting 39 years, according to the Benji of the first emperor. However, Professor Duan Qingbo, an archaeological team leader, suggests this account may be a symbolic fiction by Sima Qian. Objects excavated, including craftsmen and items in the slave quarters, indicate builders from the Warring States period. Prime Minister Li Si, documented as the presiding builder, likely oversaw construction from the 28th to the 34th year of the First Emperor. Full-scale construction began after the unification of China in 221 BCE, initiated by Emperor Qin at the age of 13 in 246 BCE. Mount Li's selection for the burial ground, attributed to its auspicious geology, was recorded by geographer Li Daoyuan six centuries later. This information is sourced from Sima Qian's Records of the Grand Historian, written in the first century BCE. Certain scholars suggest the emperor's claim of digging through three groundwater layers might be illustrative. Why is this so? This is because the original meaning of manfish in the text is unclear, as it now translates to mermaid in modern Chinese. Interpretations range from whales to walruses and other aquatic creatures like the giant salamander. Before completing the mausoleum of the first Qin emperor, a peasant rebellion erupted in the late Qin dynasty. Zhang Han redirected the 700,000 workers to quell the rebellion, halting mausoleum construction. Xiang Yu, upon entering Xianyang, reportedly looted the tomb. Subsequently, a shepherd accidentally set the tomb ablaze while searching for his sheep with a torch in the dug pit. While fire damage has been found in pits housing the Terracotta Army, no conclusive evidence supports large-scale tomb destruction. In 1987, the mausoleum and the Terracotta Army gained recognition as World Heritage Sites. But what is the Terracotta Army? In March 1974, while digging a well in Xiang village, Lintong County, Yang Jifa, his five brothers and Wang Puji stumbled upon the initial fragments of warriors, bronze arrowheads and terracotta bricks. Yang sold the arrowheads and villagers repurposed terracotta bricks. Fang Shumiao, a hydraulic works manager, advised selling the items to the cultural center, with Yang receiving 10 yuan for two carts of terracotta warrior fragments. Zhao Kangmin, in charge of the cultural center, bought everything uncovered by the villagers. The underground palace, containing metal substances and a drainage system, sparks academic debates about its depth. Peasant riots during the Qin Dynasty interrupted the mausoleum's construction, with 700,000 builders redirected to suppress the unrest. 1987, the Qin Shi Huang Mausoleum and Terracotta Warriors gained world cultural heritage status. Initial excavations in May 1974 led to the discovery of Pit 1, followed by Pit 2 in May 1976 and Pit 3 in July. The extensive 20 square meter excavation revealed approximately 7,000 terracotta warriors, horses, wooden battle chariots, and weapons. Protective structures for the pits were erected starting in 1979. By 2008, a larger necropolis with 600 pits had been uncovered, some located a few kilometers from Emperor Qin Shi Huang's tomb mound. What about the mercury in the tomb? According to ancient records dating back 2,200 years, the still unopened tomb of Emperor Qin is believed to house substantial amounts of liquid mercury, creating vast maps resembling China, which he unified. Recently, Preference Zuna Svanberg's research group, associated with South China Normal University and Lund University, utilized a mobile LIDAR system to detect mercury gas seeping from the underground tomb chamber. Their findings, now published on the Nature Scientific Reports website, draw a connection between this discovery and the historical pursuit of achieving a perfect seal for enclosures, a theme relevant to discussions ranging from ancient times to the present-day discourse on nuclear waste storage. What's the update on the research with the mercury? A recently conducted research posited that if a substantial amount of mercury, estimated at 100 tons or more, was introduced into the tomb chamber, it could lead to the formation of cracks. Coupled with the high natural vapor pressure of mercury, 
This might result in a continuous emission of atomic mercury vapor detectable in the surrounding air. Unlike other elements, mercury remains in atomic form in the atmosphere, and the differential absorption LIDAR, also known as the dial technique, allows the measurement of atmospheric mercury concentrations. But why mercury? Historical evidence from ancient China, particularly during the Song Dynasty, suggests a custom of introducing mercury into noble tombs. The preparations for the measurements began in 2009, but were carried out only recently due to various reasons, including legislation constraints. Soil measurements around the Qin Mausoleum Mound revealed elevated mercury levels, surpassing typical background values for the area. The atmospheric mercury measurements around the tomb were conducted during hot weather from July 24 to August 12, 2016, utilizing a mobile differential absorption lighter system designed for this specific purpose. The system's measurement positions surrounded the tomb, with the terracotta army pits located about two kilometers to the east. Various symbols on the mound indicated locations with the highest soil mercury content, and weather stations were installed at the top of the tomb mound and near the LIDAR system for monitoring environmental conditions. Why are archaeologists afraid of opening the tomb of China's first emperor? The ambitious endeavor of uncovering Qin Shi Huang's tomb presents formidable challenges, introducing the looming specters of death traps and mercury poisoning. This complex undertaking compels archaeologists to tread cautiously, recognizing the potential hazards beneath the layers of history. Despite thorough exploration of the encompassing graveyard, the emperor's tomb has remained mysterious for more than two millennia, preserving an enigmatic aura that tantalizes the imagination. The primary factor contributing to the prolonged reluctance to excavate the tomb is the fear that such endeavors could inadvertently jeopardize the site's sanctity, potentially resulting in the irreversible loss of invaluable historical insights. Presently, accessing the tomb entails employing invasive archaeological methods, introducing a risk of substantial and irreparable damage to the buried treasures and their historical context. This cautious approach is underscored by a poignant lesson drawn from the 1970s excavations of Troy led by Heinrich Schliemann, where haste and inexperience led to the accidental destruction of crucial town traces, a cautionary tale that resonates strongly with contemporary archaeologists, fostering a commitment to meticulous exploration to safeguard the richness of historical narratives. Now, how could the tomb be excavated? In pursuing less invasive archaeological methods, researchers have proposed innovative solutions, including harnessing muons, subatomic particles formed through collisions of cosmic rays with Earth's atmosphere. These muons essentially function as advanced X-rays, providing a non-intrusive means of scrutinizing structures. Despite the promising potential of these proposals, their widespread acceptance remains elusive. Moving beyond concerns of potential damage, the prospect of opening Qin Shi Huang's tomb brings forth immediate and substantial risks. As outlined in an essay by the ancient Chinese historian Sima Qian, crafted approximately a century after the emperor's demise, the tomb was strategically outfitted with traps designed to discourage any would-be intruders. Concealed within this sealed tomb are precious artifacts and an extraordinary treasure, heightening the stakes of any exploration. The historian detailed that skilled artisans were assigned the task of fashioning bows and arrows with the specific purpose of repelling potential intruders. If these ancient weapons failed to thwart trespassers, the historian contended that an ominous threat loomed. A deluge of toxic liquid mercury awaited those daring enough to violate the sanctity of the tomb. While this might initially sound like a fictional warning, scientific investigations examining mercury levels near the burial site have uncovered concentrations markedly exceeding the norm for ordinary soil. According to a 2020 research paper, there is a compelling hypothesis that highly volatile mercury might have permeated the tomb through gradual cracks in its structure. This lends credence to ancient chronicles asserting that the tomb has never been opened or looted. Despite the passage of time, Qin Shi Huang's tomb remains sealed and inaccessible, a tantalizing enigma for researchers who anticipate that future scientific advancements may finally unveil its long-guarded secrets. Going deeper into the emperor's life, a considerable part was devoted to a relentless pursuit, 
the legendary elixir of immortality, fervently believed in by many. In his quest for eternal life, he embarked on extensive journeys. He even dispatched a unique expedition searching for a mythical island rumored to house copious quantities of this miraculous elixir. Fueled by a self-perceived divine status and a desire for perpetual life, he resorted to consuming a concoction containing mercury, envisioning it as the key to immortality. Ironically, this elixir became his undoing, resulting in his demise at 50 after a 37-year reign. The echoes of his ambitious pursuit still resonate within the confines of his sealed tomb, where secrets and revelations await the march of scientific progress. But have scientists finally opened the tomb? According to our research, scientists are still in the process of opening the tomb. So far, their major obstacle is the high amount of mercury associated with the tomb. However, there have been a lot of advancements in technology that will make the excavation of the tomb possible shortly. We hope you liked this video. Please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing to the channel if you do. Thank you for watching.